Welcome back guys to another West Ham transfer news video, a West Ham transfer talk video where I give you some of the latest West Ham transfer news, whether they're factual or just rumours, give my opinion on it. But most importantly, give your opinion on it down below. We have got quite a few, lot of talk about really because I didn't really want to make you know selective videos. I just want to sort of give you some decent transfer news that I've collected just from Twitter, etc., and give my opinion on it. So the first one, well, first bit of news we're going to talk about broke a couple of days ago. I think it was about two days ago. And it was from XWHU employee. Now, guys, if you support West Ham and you don't know who this guy is, this guy is essentially the number one go-to ITK. I think, Dan, judging by Twitter handle, he used to work for West Ham, still has a lot of good sources and sort of has his fingers in a lot of pies in regards to other clubs. So he actually tweeted out saying about Arsenal. Uh, I've been looking at Anderson and a lot of clubs really now are sort of being given their interest in Anderson. He goes, apparently Arsenal have a lot of dealing with Keir Drapton too, is Anderson's agent. As I say, when I heard this, I don't believe it, but it's from two reliable sources. As I said, probably a backup option. Now, this is the original post that he was saying. A few clubs have started to show an interest in Anderson, including former club Lazio and surprisingly Arsenal. Edu, their technical director, is a big fan and recommended him for the Brazil national team. This is likely to be a backup option for them, but there is also interest. Now, I think it's very common. You know, everyone knows that West Ham are looking to shift. Well, David Moyes is looking to shift Anderson on because he realises that Anderson is one of those players at the club who's coming to an age where he's 27, you know, approaching 28 years of age. He doesn't really have a lot of time left sort of to make that next move. You know, West Ham, if they were to sell him, we're going to probably sell him for around about 20 to 25 million pounds and he is someone at the moment I feel like he's a luxury player and it's not something that West Ham really need right now we need to stop you know sort of those inconsistencies and players like that having loads of players who are inconsistent like Anderson like Lanzini sort of is one of the detrimental reasons why we have inconsistent seasons so I think David Moy realizes this and he realizes that Anderson's one of those players that can bring in money so we are able to sell you know, well, David Moyes is able to bring in his top transfer targets. Now, oh, obviously, there seems to be sort of a reunion at Arsenal at the moment. You're William rejoining. You had David Luiz, who went from Chelsea to Arsenal. So, could another Brazilian be heading over to Arsenal? If he was to sign, he would be a rotation rotational option. He wouldn't start. He isn't good enough to start. I think his ability is there, but... Uh, but as I said, his inconsistency means that he just isn't at that next level. So if West Ham were to get an offer of around about £25 million, I think David Moyes would take it because it will enable him to get his top targets. Now, let's go on to the next sort of piece of news. And that is Shane Duffy. Over the last few days, this is West Ham news. He, um, he tweeted it out. Then X, obviously, who's quoted in the tweet, Retweeted it. Over the last few days, West Ham have held talks with John Stones, Shane Duffy and Phil Jones about potential loan deals. Additionally, conversations have been held with Duffy for a loan to buy a deal. Talks will continue over the next couple of days. Now, going by XWHU employee again, he said that we have spoke to Shane Duffy on Friday and since then, no talks have commenced. So he said it will be interesting to see if we pick up. Now, the thing that's most concerning here is Firstly, let's talk about the players. I think John Stones would be a decent signing under the right system. Shane Duffy would be a very good signing, in my opinion. Probably, if I had to choose out of all three, of course, for me, it would be that Shane Duffy. I feel, just feel like he's something that West Ham need. They need a little bit more a sturdy defence. Someone who's going to win their head, you know, sort of fight for the badge kind of thing. Phil Jones, please, just don't sign in West Ham. Huge wages. He's just terrible. Please do not go anywhere near Phil Jones. But the thing that most... It's the most concerning thing here is potential loan deals. We know West Ham, by the looks of it, do not have any money. And, you know, and I think that has given opportunity for potential buyers for Declan Rice, Chelsea, Man United. And the news I'm going to talk about that broke today regarding Issa Diop, their teams are going to come in for our better players and maybe start off with low ball offers because judging by the, the piece of business we're trying to, you know, achieve kind of thing is that we don't have no money. So teams are going to notice, right, West Ham have no money. If they value Declan Rice at 80 million, let's offer 40, let's offer 50. Let's test them to see, let's test their resolve and see if they can actually reject those kind of offers of 40 to 50 million. I'm hoping 
We signed Shane Duffy. Um, to be fair, John Stones and Shane Duffy for me would be very good signings. Shane Duffy, I think, would probably be the better signing. I think he reminds me of that mould of Ginger Pele. When balls come in the box, he's going to get his head onto it. He's going to fight for the badge. And he's probably going to be the one out of all three that embraces the West Ham culture. And for me, West Ham fans will probably take take too quickly just because of the kind of way he plays and as i said he sort of represents shane um represents sort of ginger pele now there is somewhere along here that he did say there was reports saying that this transfer was pretty close however celtic are also in the conversation it does seem like it's either going to be celtic or west ham there was reports a couple of weeks ago or a week ago that west brom were the favorites that they were talking to him however at the moment going by xwhu employee he gets things 99.9 percent .9 of the time right okay i'm not going to say he gets 100 percent of the thing 100 percent of the time because no one ever does 99.9 .9%, if you have twitter and you don't follow him make sure you're following i'm not you know i don't really know him so yeah he said Celtic's out of celtic and west ham so it could be a very, very good transfer for us. Now, he also said, if I can't find it, I'll just talk about it. He said that West Ham have narrowed down their left-back targets to Rico Henry. And I think he might have said Manning, but don't quote me on it, Manning from QPR. However, finances are an issue. So it does look like that West Ham need to sell before they can buy. Now, Sky Sports, Cavi... Solly Cole, sorry, I don't know how, really know how to pronounce his name. He's sort of done an article on SkySports.com. And I think the sort of the rep, rep pillet, mm, don't know, you know, how am I going to say this? I don't think Sky, you know, are as reputable as they used to be. You know, their sources just ain't that, you know, high, high tier anymore. He's sort of just done an article sort of just breaking down things. West Ham are willing to listen to offers for Diop. Now... This has sort of divided West Ham fans. I've been looking at Twitter. I like to do that. I like to see sort of what what West Ham fans actually think of this. If we go into it, Issa Diop in demand. West Ham need to sell players this summer and they would be willing to listen to offers of £45 million for Issa Diop. He was reported to be valued at £75 million when Manchester United were linked with him last summer. At least two Premier League clubs want to sign him this window. Diop is thought to earn less than half of what some of his teammates do, and a fresh start at a new club would, would bring a big increase on his 50 grand a week wages. Now, where do I sit on this? So, from what I gather, sort of from Twitter and the West Ham fa fan base, a lot of people do think he's clumsy. A lot of people do think that the fullbacks haven't helped him because he's obviously, when the fullbacks are pushed up high and we've, we're caught, caught in transition, Diop and Ogbonna can sort of be isolated, and they're not really the quickest of centre backs. So they can sort of be exposed for their weaknesses. However, the thing with Diop, he is, in, he is inconsistent. I think a lot of that is due to his young age. We have to remember, Issa Diop is only 23 years of age. And then I can... And, and Anderson, for example, yes, he's inconsistent, but he's 27, 28 years of age. So he sort of had that time to sort of get out of that, you know, sort of spell where he's inconsistent. Young players are going to be inconsistent. You know, they're sort of still learning the game, still still sort of learning the trade. He come from Toulouse for about 21 million. He has been linked with Tottenham, of all people, for 45 million pounds. And that is mainly because, if you remember correctly, I think is when we beat them 3-1, when Jose Mourinho was still Manchester United manager, he come out and said in his post-match interview, and he was like, whoever the scout was that got Issa Diop, he's an absolute monster, you know, well done. So, 45 million pounds. And I would like to hear your comments on this, guys. Are you are you in the camp where Diop should be sold? And this is how I'm sort of addressing it. Yes, I think Diop is he's an, he's 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 done all right the first two seasons. He's still young. He can still nurture sort of those inconsistencies. Now, if we address those fullback options, yes, it could help Diop be a sort of more of established, a more of a more consistent centre back. However, we've also got to think about the the here and right now. Declan Rice is wanted by Chelsea. We obviously need to bring in some kind of revenue to enable us, enables David Moyes to sort of go out and get his number one targets, whether it's Rico Henry, whether it's Eze. And for me personally, if I had to sacrifice either Declan Rice or Diop, I'm going Diop because I feel like Diop is a, well, Diop is a lot more replaceable than Declan Rice. Because if we sell Diop for £45 million, we then have the ability to maybe sign Shane Duffy for £10 million, maybe bring John Stones in. On a, on a loan, so we spent ten million on um, Shane Duffy, a loan deal with John Stones. For me, we sort of replaced it's a Diop with two transfers, costing a total of ten million. Yes, other fees like agent fees, we're not including that. However, we've then sort of 
given David Moyes another chunk of money where it's 25, 35 million, where it can go, right, now you can start pursuing those other targets such as uh, Eze, such as Rico Henry. They're going to cost, Rico Henry's going to cost 15 million. So it's going to be very interesting whether this new source is true, um, what we're going to do with that money. For me personally, if it had to mean we had to sell one of our better players like Rice or Diop, for me, I would 100% behind, be behind selling Diop just because I think Declan Rice would be, we won't be able to replace Declan Rice. We're not replacing Declan Rice. He's a top quality player. He's a top four player. And for me, we would be able to replace Issa Diop. So it's going to be interesting to see the next couple of days in regards to transfer news. X did say in his sort of a podcast that he does every Wednesday that when the players return back, to pre-season training on Sunday slash Monday, the transfers should start to pick up. Obviously, David Moyes is going to analyse players such as Josh Cullen. He's going to analyse players such as Dan Garner. He's going to see, well, do they fit what he's trying to create at West Ham? And I do feel like Issa Diop could be the one that maybe could be sacrificed because then maybe we would only have to sell Lanzini. We might not have to sell Anderson. If it means we sell Diop for 45 million, we then sell Lanzini. That's another 10 to 12 million maybe pocketed. We might not need to sell Anderson. But however, I do firmly sit on that Anderson. I see a lot, obviously a lot of stats. And yes, I do sort of agree that Chris Cresswell may sort of hinder, you know, Anderson. But for me personally, if Anderson does not have a good season next season, his value drops another 10 million. We're then taking a 30 million loss on him rather than a 20 million loss so i suppose you do have to sort of balance it out we sort of as i said mentioned in other videos we have to respect the fact that david moyes wants his top targets he wants as a he wants um left backs he wants right backs so we have to respect that and if he means he wants to sell d for 45 million which enables us to keep rice he has to sell anderson i'm for, i'm all for it you know i fully back for me i think david moyes deserves a chance to see what he could do with this team and bringing his own players because the football did pretty improve after you know lockdown. So guys, let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of the rumors that rumors of Anderson maybe going back to Lazio or Arsenal. What do you think of the rumors of Issa Diop potentially going to Tottenham to be united with Jose Mourinho, who's obviously a big fan. We're talking about forty-five million pounds. Would you rather sacrifice Diop for Declan Rice? For me, I would rather sac uh, Diop if it was meaning keeping Declan Rice. Bringing in possibly John Stones and Shane Duffy as potential replacements for Issa Diop. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you support West Ham, make sure you subscribe. We're almost at 400 subscribers. Let's try and hit 400 subscribers ASAP. That would be hugely appreciated. And I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.